Hey you guys, welcome to the abridged version of how I painted this rainbow zebra using just three colors, which I show here, M. Graham Naphthal Red, Windsor & Newton Ultramarine Blue, and Oriolan by Holbein. Not any other Oriolan, only Holbein makes the kind that is light fast. And this is a sneak peek at an upcoming beginner's tutorial that I'm doing about how to paint the color wheel, how to mix, how to control your water and the amount of paint in your brush so you get these nice even sections and a lot more will be included in that video for my super beginners. But the whole reason I did this project was for my Patreon students, especially my new ones, after I got feedback that people were overwhelmed by the possibility of having to buy a lot of different colors. And you really don't have to buy a lot of different colors. For this painting, I only used three colors and I even was able to paint the black in the eye and the mane using just the three primary colors I'm going to show you here. So let's get started and I'm gonna explain the highlights of how I painted this zebra. And if you would like to learn more in depth from me about how I painted this and about 20-ish other tutorials. If you join my Patreon for just $5 a month, you will get instant access to my entire library of in-depth uh, painting tutorials, some being more beginner level and simple and some being more complex. Let's go ahead and get started. Be sure to like this video, subscribe. I upload new videos every week. And if you really want to support me without having to spend any money, just watch this video to the end because that is the number one thing the YouTube algorithm looks at when it's deciding what videos to share. So please watch this to the end or put me on mute and go do the dishes. All right. Well, I hope you're still here and I hope you're not doing the dishes. I hope you're watching me tape this zebra down and I discovered probably my number one discovery for the last several months is this new tape that I'm using here and to encourage you to watch to the very end I'll tell you at the end exactly what it is but I always have a problem with my masking tape coming up and coming unglued and not holding my paper down and it has been a lot a problem for a long time ever since my favorite brand of masking tape duck brand changed their formulation and it no longer stuck nicely to my paper so i just recently learned about this new tape that i love and i'll tell you about it all uh, i'll tell you all about it at the very end but then i cover it up with washi tape because it does get a little bit of seepage but here i have it all taped down i'm using 140 pound cold press arches paper and I am taping it to an Elmer's brand is in the Elmer's glue backing board that I get on Amazon they come in all different sizes and I'm getting ready to put on my masking I mixed a little bit of blue into my masking fluid and I touch my um, my brush into water and then scrub it on soap and then put masking on so the masking doesn't get stuck on my brush if it dries out a little bit too much. And I used a lot more masking than I typically do in paintings for this particular painting because uh, the main needed a lot of texture. So I used a lot of masking in the main. I used masking around the periphery of the ear. And as you will see soon, I used masking along the front of the face, just a thin line. And I did this because I really want the the light to really look dramatic in the zebra and for him to have that little pure white outline that happens when the light is hitting you, hitting the face or whatever it's hitting really um, just right and it's got a beautiful glow to it so I used that with my masking and uh, uh, the zebra's face has a lot of uh, hills and um, hills and valleys in it, a lot of contours. So along the bottom of his cheek where it kind of juts out in space, I put some masking too, so that that would take on an added dimension and look like it's, um, it's up above his muzzle. So I used my warm and cool colors a lot to suggest contouring in this painting. So cool being blues and warms being yellows and reds and if you can't remember that just think cool is ice and warm is the sun and fire so the colors of fire are warm yellow and red and the colors of ice and winter are blue and cool 
And here I'm going ahead and painting in the background first. And if you guys didn't watch it yet, be sure to catch my epic 10 tips on how to paint a background. And you'll see in this background, I used those tips by um, graying down my background a little bit. So the colors in the zebra really pop. And I need to do a video just about how to use gray in your painting to make your brighter colors really pop. But um, that's a whole nother video, but I need to do it. Yes, I know. But there is some, I talk about that a little bit in my um, latest video about painting backgrounds. So be sure not to miss that. There are tons of really good tips in it. And here I'm painting the muzzle uh, wet and wet. I've moistened the zebra and I've gotten his um, whole face wet and I'm painting some um, areas wet and wet. I let the paper dry some before I paint those very soft stripes because otherwise they would just bl blossom out uncontrollably. You have to let your paper dry a little bit, but I'm using cream consistency paint here when you see the paint really thick. And that muzzle, by the way, is quite gray, isn't it? But I painted it with only these three colors, mostly ultramarine blue, a dash of yellow, and I would say um, maybe a third of the mix is um, the, the naphthol red. Again, I'm using Naphthol Red, Ultramarine Blue, and Holbein Oriolan to create these colors. And I'm using colors to suggest the contours as well as how close the stripe is to the light. So the lighter, the, the areas of the zebra's face that are touched by the sunlight are warmer, like this red. And then I use cooler, grayer colors where it is, uh, the stripe is in the contour, like under the cheek, down in the muzzle, lower down the face, on the side of the face that is in a valley of the zebra's face structure, which makes it cooler. And then the areas that kind of jut out and are exposed completely to the bright light, I painted those warm, in warm tones, oranges, yellows, and reds, and just that really helps to add extra dimension to the zebra stripes. And that is kind of the whole concept behind this painting that I wanted to show my students is you can use color to make things recede or come forward. You can use color to suggest contours. And I did that with this zebra and also to show dramatic light. So in the warmer light, the stripes get brighter, more saturated, less gray, more warm, red, and orange, and yellow. In the cooler areas where they're in shadow, they're grayer, they're cooler or more blue, and they recede. So that's kind of how I use color to shape the zebra's face and neck. And here I'm just using a silver black velvet size eight round. I used that for this entire painting. I painted this zebra about a size six by five. And I found that in some of the stripes, you really have to uh, paint really lightly. So uh, if you wanna play with more color and make your stripes even more colorful, then you might wanna paint this a little bit bigger. And um, I do ask that if you paint this zebra, I would love that. Just be sure that you share that you painted it from my tutorial and help people find my tutorial so I can continue to grow my tutorials and bring you even more specialized content. And I use blue in the ear because that is a cooler color in the ear. It's in the shadow. And I actually created this picture from two different zebras. The face of the zebra is one photo and then I found a much better neck that was not as stubby, it wasn't as flat, it curves around. So you can also see a lot about how I um, compose a painting with this particular painting by using lines. You want to try to have uh, lines in your painting that direct the viewer's eye and that curve in the neck directs the viewer's eye up over the zebra's back, around, down the ear, and down to the most interesting part of the eye. And to tell the viewer's eye to focus in on the zebra's eye, I use the most contrast and the most detail and the lightest super bright whites and the darkest darks in the background are all in the eye area. So I put a lot more detail in the eye. I made sure that I masked out the lashes so it adds that extra level of interest, that jewelry that I talk about in a lot of my tutorials. I talk a lot about jewelry in my 
all about how to paint horses um, tutorial. And I will be making a tutorial just about jewelry too. But basically it's just those extra little final details at the end that are small to really add pizzazz to your paintings. And you don't want too much jewelry because then it will overwhelm the viewer's eye. So anyway, that's how I um, kind of control where the viewer is looking by using jewelry, by using my contrast, by using more saturated colors in the highest area of interest, the eye. And then I used tea consistency glazes after everything was dry to uh, suggest even more depth like along the crest of the neck. Now you can see I left white on the top of the neck and the bottom of the neck and then down the middle of the neck I made that very pretty little tea consistency blue shadow that I really feel helps um, make the neck look rounder, give it some contour. But also I left plenty of sparkling white there to draw the viewer's eye and I painted around that white forelock area above the eye, jutting out into space into the background to create interest. You want to think in terms of your backgrounds as shapes in and of themselves. They're negative shapes. Negative shapes being the shapes around your main subject. The zebra is the positive space. The background is the negative space. And you want your background shape to be interesting. What makes the background shape really interesting in this painting? It's the curves in the zebra's face, his eyelashes jutting out into the background, and those white forelock hairs jutting out into the background really help make this painting a lot more interesting and um, look better aesthetically to have those very um, jagged interesting shapes in the background in the negative space. And I used several different colors in the background. I grayed them down. How do you gray colors down? Well, you use their complementary colors. You look across the color wheel. What's across the color wheel from green? Red. So if you want a gray or green, add a tiny little bit of red. If you want a gray or blue, what's the opposite of blue? Yellow plus red is orange. That's the opposite of blue. Add a tiny bit of orange to your blue to gray it down. To gray down purple, you add some, um, you add yellow, that will gray down your purple, just a little bit to gray it down. So it still looks that color, just a little grayer. So these pure colors in the zebra will really sing and help the viewer look at your zebra instead of your background. You don't want them to linger in your background. You want your background to really support the zebra. And I talk about that so much in my epic uh, 10 tips how to paint backgrounds video I just released last week so be sure to check that out and look how those white areas really make this painting sing I love that and then I'm making sure to get some really interesting jagged very dark uh, main hairs coming out over the background that really adds a look of realism and interest to get those um, hairs really detailed. I'm using a size one script brush by Silver Black Velvet. If you are thinking you are going to commit to watercolor, I highly recommend getting the set on Amazon or Dick Blick, wherever, of three brushes for $45 of these Silver Black Velvets. You get an oval, a round, and a script. You'll find it if you Google it. You can also um, look in my supply list if you're a Patreon. Uh, member, I provide links for all of those supplies to my Patreon members. By the way, as promised, I wanted to share with you the tape that I was using in that painting, and it's medical tape, 3M medical tape. You can buy it on Amazon, and it is a surgical tape. It is porous, so that's why I put washi, ta washi tape on top of that. You could put masking on top of it, too, just so that little bits of paint don't get in under um, into the pores but it really I'm so happy with it it's the find of the year for me so I hope you enjoy it too all right you guys thank you so much for tuning in to this abridged version of how I painted this rainbow zebra with just three colors and next week I should be releasing my video about uh, how I painted this color wheel with just three colors and um, all about primary, tertiary, and secondary colors and uh, my basic approach to color mixing. So I'll see you then. Bye, you guys.